Hello, welcome to Vedil Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see about IR versus Raman active vibrations. This particular video is based on a question taken from GATE 2024 question paper. So let us see the question first. Consider the following six vibrational modes, symmetric stretching of carbon dioxide, OH strip, symmetric stretching of water, stretching of HCl, stretching of hydrogen, NH stretching of ammonia and bending of carbon dioxide. Among these modes, if K number of modes are IR active but Raman inactive, L number of modes are IR inactive but Raman active and M number of modes are both IR active and Raman active. So in this particular question, there are six different vibrational modes are given and then they have classified them into three categories. In K category which is labeled as K, the vibrations will be IR active but will not be Raman active and in the second category the vibrations will be IR inactive but Raman active and the third category is both of them will be Raman active and IR active. So, we will have to classify these vibrations and then we have to find the number that falls into this category because they have given the choices as number of vibrations. So, before going into classifying these vibrations, let us see some basic info about IR and Raman vibrations and which of the vibrations will be Raman active, which of them will be Raman inactive and why does it happen so. So, let us see the example. So, I have put HCl molecule here as a common example for us to understand IR and Raman active vibration or in other words when do we say a molecule is Raman active or IR active. So basically what is the principle of both these spectroscopic techniques. So you know pretty well in case of Raman it is based on scattering of light, IR spectroscopy is based on absorption of light. And in case of Raman spectroscopy, it is about polarizability of the molecule. In case of IR, it is about the dipole moment of the molecule. And in both the cases, we are actually studying the molecular vibration and what happens to molecular vibrations when radiation falls on them. This is the basis of understanding Raman and IR spectroscopy. Let me use this example of HCl. We know HCl is a heteronuclear diatomic molecule. So, this heteronuclear diatomic molecule is a, a molecule which is having a dipole moment because we know chlorine is electronegative. So, the electron density will be shifted towards chlorine and that is why chlorine has a partial negative charge, hydrogen has a partial positive charge. So, this molecule is inherently having a dipole moment. So, when a molecule has a dipole moment and when this molecule is vibrating, in this case there are there is only one possible way of vibration which is the stretching vibration in the sense the H and Cl bond can be stretched or compressed. So, in this case, in these two possible cases, what would happen to the dipole? So, in these two possible cases, we see there will be change in dipole moment. And because of this vibrational motion of bond, okay, between H and Cl, which causes in dipole, sorry, which causes change in dipole moment. And this change in dipole moment is the result of the energy matching of the IR radiation with that of the stretching vibrational frequency of HCl. And that is the reason why HCl is considered to be IR active. In other words, any molecule that has a dipole moment and if a particular vibrational mode of that particular molecule results in change in dipole moment, then that vibrational mode will be IR active. Now coming to Raman active mode. When we are talking about Raman active, in this case HCl is already having a dipole. But when we are seeing molecules which are non-polar like say for example hydrogen. In case of non-polar molecules like hydrogen, 
we know there is no dipole so there some radiation from outside could bring about distortion in this bond or in other words there can be an induced dipole and this is called as polarizability okay the, the some kind of polarizability is seen in the molecule and this change in polarizability should result in change in the molecular behavior or in other words now what i mean to say here is when radiation falls on the molecule the molecule gets excited and then there is some change in polarizability of its vibrational modes so like i said in case of hcl there is stretching and compression in case of hydrogen molecule also there will be stretching vibration and also compression of the vibration so when stretching happens in this bond already it is polarizable and this polarizability changes in the molecule because of vibration then it will be raman active so in simple words whenever i have a molecule and if that molecule's vibrational mode is sensitive to uh, light in the sense that vibrational mode changes either in case of dipole then it will be ir active if it is polarizable the if that vibrational modes result in change in the polarizability you know uh, of the uh, electron density of that particular molecule then it will be raman active so this is uh, the simple basis the theory of raman spectroscopy we will see in some other video uh, which is not the scope here so for this particular video all i want you to remember is only two things first raman active vibra um, um, vibrational modes must have change in their polarizability so if i am having two different vibrational modes for hydrogen molecule both of them must have a different set of polarizability ellipsoids in terms of classical theory whereas in case of ir active vibrations we know the molecule if it is non polar definitely whatever be its vibration whether it is stretching or compression it is not going to bring about any change in its dipole moment whereas in case of a heteronuclear diatomic molecule which has a dipole moment definitely stretching of the vibration will result in decrease in dipole moment and compression could increase in dipole moment and as a result there will be change in dipole moment due to vibration then it will be ir active if there is a change in polarizability then it will be raman active so now let us go and see a few more examples so how do we learn or how do we know how many vibrational modes are possible for a particular molecule like in the previous two examples that i have used i said there is stretching vibration but then uh, there is a set of formula and these two formula, uh, formulas are just enough for us to decide the number of vibrational modes are possible for a particular molecule so it is said for a linear molecule 3n minus 5 is the formula for non linear molecule 3n minus 6 is the formula wherein n is the number of atoms in the molecule so if i know the number of atoms and if i know the geometry of the molecule i can find out the number of vibrational modes in the molecule so first and foremost we must find out the number of possible vibrational modes for a molecule and after finding that out only we can actually find which among them will be ir active or raman active so when uh, we are uh, looking at the molecules that are listed in our question so hydrogen hcl carbon dioxide water and ammonia we see their geometries we know pretty well the first three molecules are linear geometry whereas water is a bent molecule and ammonia is a pyramidal molecule so they are non linear so we know the formula for linear molecule the formula for non linear molecule and n is the number of atoms so here the number of atoms is 2 here also the number of atoms is 2 
here the number of atoms is 3 that is 1 carbon and 2 oxygen here it is 3 and here it is 4 that is what is written here and then substituting the value of m in the respective formulas we know because the first three are linear we have used the first formula and the next two are non-linear we have used the next formula so subtracting the values we get the number of vibrational modes possible for hydrogen is 1. For HCl, it is also 1. For carbon dioxide, there are 4. For water, it is 3. And for ammonia, it is 6. Now, the next question comes is, what is the type of vibrational mode? If I say 1, what is it? So, it is because it is a diatomic molecule, we know pretty well the only way it can vibrate is by stretching out the bond. And that is the reason why you see here the two vibrational modes that are possible for hydrogen and HCl is only stretching. There are no other vibrational modes possible. Now, let us see for carbon dioxide. In case of carbon dioxide, it is a three bonded molecule. And though it is a linear molecule, we know pretty well it is not only the stretching that is possible. There are other kind of vibrational modes also possible, which includes asymmetric stretching and two bending modes. We will see them in the next slide. Similarly, in case of water, we see three types. In case of ammonia, we see six types. So now that we know that there are different types of vibrational modes, what is asked in the question is, when a molecule is having different sets of vibrational modes, which set of vibrational mode will be IR active? Which among these is Raman active? That is what we are going to address in the next slide. So now looking at this molecule of carbon dioxide, we see that the possible modes of vibration that we saw in the pre previous slide was Stretch, symmetrical stretching, asymmetrical stretching and bending modes. And these are the ways in which stretching can happen. Symmetrical stretching is stretching of the bonds on both sides in the opposite direction or toward each other. Asymmetric stretching is both of them facing on one side toward the left or toward the right. Bending, we know the bond is bent. It is vibration. It is not changing to the bond angle. It is the, you know, possibility of the molecule to bend. So, this is a vibration. This is the bending vibration. And so, the bending vibration is assuming that both the bond are bent symmetrically or they are bent on the opposite direction. So, when we see these possibilities, what we find is in case of symmetrical stretching, we are talking about dipole. We know carbon dioxide is a linear molecule and it has a dipole moment of 0 because uh, the dipole moments cancel each other in case of carbon dioxide. They are in the opposite direction, so they cancel each other. So, because the dipole moments cancel each other, symmetrical stretching will definitely lead to cancellation of dipole moment and as a result, the symmetrical stretching vibrational modes of carbon dioxide will be infrared inactive because there won't be net dipole moment whereas when we are talking about asymmetrical stretching and the bending modes because it is towards one oxygen atom we see here the dipole moment is shifted on one side so either this side or that side similarly in case of bending instead of going straight it is actually bent so because it is bent definitely it will cause change in dipole moment. So, asymmetrical stretching and bending modes results in change in dipole moment and that is the reason why both of these vibrational modes are IR active. When coming to Raman spectroscopy, we are talking about polarizability change during vibration. So, when I am seeing the polarizability, see the uh, oval shaped ellipse that is shown here is the polarizability ellipsoid. The, that is the imaginary, uh, you know, situation where the polarizability exists for this particular molecule. So, what we see in case of symmetrical stretching of carbon dioxide is with the 
both bonds stretching on the outside. The ellipsoid is significantly big. When they compress, it is significantly small. In the sense, these two vibrational modes result in change in the polarizability of the molecule. And so, the symmetrical stretching vibrational mode of carbon dioxide will be Raman active. On the other hand, asymmetrical stretching and bending modes results in an ellipse. Can you, if you see this ellipse, it's marked in blue. The, you see there is no difference in the polarizability of the molecule because of change in asymmetrical stretching. And that is the reason why these two modes are Raman inactive. This is the way we will have to look at each of the molecule and come to a conclusion about whether a particular vibrational mode of the molecule is Raman active or IR active. And having understood or studied various molecules, what was under, so the, the uh, here uh, we what people said was alpha is the polarizability of the molecule. And when alpha is unchanged or when it is minimum or maximum, you will not have Raman scattering. Now coming to the next, uh, you know, simple way of understanding uh, this phenomenon. What was suggested was under the mutual exclusion principle, instead of looking at each and every molecular vibration and trying to solve the uh, polarizability of the molecule and um, they are uh, finding out whether they are Raman active or IR active. This mutual exclusion principle very easily helps us to come to a conclusion about this particular Raman active or IR active modes of vibrations. So, how is it done? It is a very simple thing. So, if a molecule has a center of symmetry, so carbon dioxide has a center of symmetry. So, if a molecule has a center of symmetry and if it has a dipole, then all the vibrations that are IR active will be Raman act inactive and IR inactive vibration will be Raman active. So, this is what is called as mutual exclusion principle. So, they found out that for every center of symmetric molecule, this rule applies perfectly well and so we can extrapolate it to any other molecule. So, now let us look at if the molecule is not having a center of symmetry, what do we do? Can we use the same principle? No. If a molecule is not having a center of symmetry, then the molecule will be both IR and Raman active. Isn't it very simple? So, only two things you have to look for. Whether the molecule has a center of symmetry and whether the molecule is not having a center of symmetry or whether the molecule is having some other geometry. So, if a molecule is linear and has a center of symmetry, then all its IR vibrations will be Raman inactive. And those that are Raman active will be IR inactive, vice versa. So, now let us go to this particular problem. In this problem, we saw various molecules. So, I have classified the molecules as diatomic molecules and triatomic molecules. In case of diatomic molecules, we, saw, we know there are homonuclear diatomic molecules which are actually IR inactive because they do not have a dipole moment. And, but then they have change in polarizability and this change in polarizability is, uh, can be studied and that is why they are Raman active. On the other hand, Heteronuclear diatomic molecule like HCl is not having a center of symmetry and so it has only a stretching vibration and so it is both IR and Raman active. And in case of carbon dioxide, we saw only symmetric stretching is IR active, sorry, IR uh, Raman active, whereas the other two are Raman inactive because they uh, we make use of mutual exclusion principle. And in case of water and ammonia, because they are non-linear, all their modes are both IR active and Raman active because in case of water and ammonia, they have a dipole moment and definitely their rotational and vibrational modes will have change in polarizability and so they will all be Raman active. So, let us see the, go back to the question. 
So we, we have to look at the question. And looking at the question, we see the answer is 1, 2, 3. That is K is equal to 1, L is equal to 2, and M is equal to 3. So what is K? Modes that are IR active but Raman inactive. So in this particular uh, question, uh, we were uh, shown symmetric stretching. So modes that are IR active and Raman active. So the first symmetric stretching of carbon dioxide, we see it is not IR active. So this will not come under the K category. So what is the category which is IR active but Raman inactive? So the only uh, uh, entity is the bending mode. Yes, is missing. Y or PS. So only the bending mode is IR active but Raman inactive. Asymmetric stretching is not listed here. So we can ignore this. The next category is IR inactive but Raman active. So in case of IR inactive and Raman active, we see here there is uh, uh, two things. This is IR inactive but Raman active and also we have the uh, symmetric stretching which is IR inactive. So there are only two possibilities and those two possibilities are listed here. Stretching of carbon dioxide and then uh, we have the homonuclear diatomic stretching of hydrogen. So these two are listed here. And the final third category is both Raman and IR active. So we know that OH, NH3 and HCl, all of them are both IR and Raman active because they are not centrosymmetric molecules and they do not follow the mutual exclusion principle. And all their modes are both IR and Raman active. This is how we solve this question. Hope you understood. Thank you.